Well, today is the seventh Sabbath of the uh, Feast of Weeks. Alam natin to, di ba? Today is the uh, last Sabbath of the uh, seventh Sabbath of the Feast of Weeks. And tomorrow is the day of the Pentecost. Well, we all know what Pentecost means, right? It's the 50th day from the day of the wave shift offering. Okay, the Feast of Weeks, we all know, is seven weeks. Seven times seven is 49. Today is the 49th day. And tomorrow is the 50th day. So, Pentecost means the 50th day. And the Feast of Weeks is a 50-day festival of the spring harvest, you know, which is spiritually represents the first spiritual harvest of God. And we know that the Feast of Weeks starts from the day of the wave shift offering. And the first of the first fruit is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who rose from the dead. He was the first to be resurrected. And after that is uh, the rest of the harvest, you know, at the completion of which Celebration is tomorrow, which is the day of the Pentecost. And I'll try to talk that a little. I'll talk a little bit more about that uh, tomorrow um, um, uh, in the celebration of the Pentecost. So I would like to uh, remind everyone that the uh, uh, celebration of the feast of the day of the uh, Pentecost is tomorrow. And uh, the service will be held, uh, is held at the uh, Elsa Shangri-La Plaza Hotel. No? So we will have a morning service and a afternoon service. The morning service starts, as you know, uh, 10 o'clock in the morning. And the afternoon service will start most probably around 2 uh, to 2.30 in the afternoon. Okay. So the Feast of Weeks is a harvest period okay uh, and spiritually it's also the spiritual harvest period of god okay starting with jesus christ and the first fruits jesus said in matthew chapter 9 in verse 35 is he said, Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness. And when he saw the crowd, he had compassion on them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, so he turned to his disciples, and he said this. He said, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Yeah. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into the field. Okay. Jesus had compassion on the people. They said, Hey, you know, these people. You know, um, they look harassed, they are helpless, they need spiritual help, right? And people are eager, you know, uh, the harvest can be plentiful, but the workers are few. Okay, so let us pray that we may send out more workers into the field. So have you ever wondered who these workers are? Who are these workers are? You know? And your answer will be right. It's you. Okay? The workers are few and the workers are you. I think that's a hymn like that, right? You know, the workers are few and the workers are you. Okay. In John chapter 14, in verse 12, 
This is during the night that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was betrayed. He spent the night talking to the disciples. He knew that he is returning to the Father and the work has to continue. You know, so on this particular evening, Jesus said in John chapter 14 and in verse 12, he said, I tell you the truth. Okay. In the King James Version, it's verily, verily, I say unto you, right? Whoever believes in me will do the work I have been doing. Okay, so he has given this commission on that faithful night to the disciples or the apostles who sat with him at the table. He said, if you believe in me, you will do the work that I have been doing. And they will do even greater things than this. Because I am going to the Father. Okay. And we have read this verse many times in the past. Okay. But I believe we have not totally grasped its meaning and its significance. Okay. <clears throat> this verse actually says two things. First, it says that whoever believes in Jesus will do the work that Jesus is doing. Okay? He said, Anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. Okay? So that's the first thing that Jesus said. So, then we ask, what's the work that Jesus you know, did on earth. And we know very well that this is the preaching of the gospel. Okay. And that work, the preaching of the gospel has not ended. You know, it will continue until the end of the age. And on the very night, as we read here, Jesus instructed and reminded the disciples of the work that is at hand. So after his resurrection, Jesus Christ, Christ spent 40 days instructing the disciples about the kingdom of God. As he prepared them for the work. Okay. And prior to his ascension, he gave the disciples this particular charge. And we can go to Matthew chapter 28, the last chapter of Matthew. And in verse 16, Matthew 28, and in verse 16, he said, Then the disciples, then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus has told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, Say, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. Okay. <clears throat> and surely I will be I will always be with you until the end of the age. Okay, so Jesus gave them this particular instruction. Okay. <clears throat> And the second thing is that in that particular verse in John chapter 14 in verse 12 is that the disciples were, will do even greater things okay, than Jesus Christ. And in fact, this verse is very true. It actually happened. And it was recorded in Acts chapter 5 you know, that the apostles, they have taken perform great miracles. And it suggested that even the shadow of Peter 
actually heals. Okay, and that's how powerful it is. Okay, and Paul, we won't go there, is that, you know, Paul can do anointing oil, you know, and the anointing cloth, the anointing oil he put in a cloth, you know, actually heal people. So let's go to Acts chapter 5, starting from verse 12. Said the apostles performed many signs and wonders. So the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders among the people. And all the believers used to meet together in Solomon's colonnade. So no one ever dared, no one ever dared join them, even though they were highly regarded by the people. Nonetheless, more and more men and women believed in the Lord and were added to their number. As a result, people bring the sick into the streets and lay them on beds and mats so that at least Peter's shadow may fall on some of them as he passed by. Crowds gathered also from towns around Jerusalem, bringing their sick and those tormented by impure spirits, and all of them were healed. So even the shadow of Peter, you know, heals. Now, with regard to the power of the preaching, uh, we know what happened at the day of the Pentecost. It was so powerful that 3,000 people were baptized in a single day. And consequently, a few days after, you know, more people were baptized and the church grew to 5,000. And the work grew. You know, it spread across the known Roman Empire, you know, and the church and the work continues to be active today, okay, as we, the new disciples of Christ, we continue to preach the gospel that was once and for all, you know, preached by Jesus Christ and once and for all given to the saints. When we look at the Passover season, Passover is God saves us, right? God came, He died for us, Christ came, and He saves us. It's God saving us. The days of unleavened bread is our commitment to God, in our way of, you know, of, of, you know, unleavening or taking out sin from our lives. You know, it's our way of conversion. Actually, it's a way of us saving ourselves. Right? Because if we fall into the old ways, we'll be lost. And then we, and when you come to the Feast of Weeks, okay, we are part of the first fruits. Not only are we to save ourselves, we are to save others. Because this is the harvest time. Okay? And somehow... Paul talk about this in 1 Timothy. Let's talk about 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 16. 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 16. He said, watch your life. So after we have received salvation through the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, what do we do? That is where your days of unleavened bread will come in. Watch your life. We unleaven our lives. We try and strive to live a holy and righteous life, you know, as our Heavenly Father is holy and righteous. He said, watch your life and your doctrine closely. Preserve, uh, persevere in them because if you do, you will save both yourself and your hearers. Okay, this is what Paul wrote to Timothy. So as co-workers of Timothy, as co-workers of Christ in this time and age, okay, 
it is our responsibility that not only do we self save ourselves, you know, we are to save others as well. Okay. So there is indeed <clears throat> a work to be done. Jesus gave a parable to his disciples whom he sent out, you know, to do the work, right? And there is a lesson in this particular parable uh, for all of us. I think this parable has been read uh, a little bit slanted, okay, uh, in the past. And uh, today, I think, you know, we'd like to revisit it and look at it from a, you know, I think the right perspective. Okay? This is the parable of the sower. Okay, when we come to the parable of the sower, <clears throat> which we all know is in Matthew chapter 13. This parable of the sower is interesting because a lot of messages, sermons, and sermonettes, you know, and you know, teachings that come out of this, the parable of the sower. You know, what has always been talked about is the seed, right? And talk about the ground, whether it is fertile or not. Okay, that has always been the focus. Okay, so let's go there. But I don't think that, but for today's discussion, you know, I want to focus on the other part. The other part is the sower which very few people actually, you know, focus on in the discussion. So let's go to Matthew, the 13th chapter, <clears throat> and let's start from verse 1. So that same day, Jesus went out of the house, and he sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it while all the people stood on the shore. Okay. So what you know what is a lake, right? What is a uh, shoreline? Okay. What is a lake and what's a shoreline is that, you know, uh, you know, it can easily be crowded and you won't be able to see the person in front of you. Not too far. Okay, so Jesus wanting to address the crowd, he got into the boat, sailed off to a short distance so that he will have a better perspective of people and people will have a better perspective of him. Then he told them many things in parables saying, said a farmer went out to sow his seed. Okay, so a farmer went out to sow his seed. Okay, like... You know, what uh, uh, John mentioned earlier, you know, he has a farm, he went out to take care of the, of, 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 of the farm, and he sowed seeds, okay? So as he was scattering the seed, <clears throat> as he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path. And the birds came and ate it up. You know. So when you go to the province and you see uh, the uh, rice fields, there are pathways, right? There are pathways, uh, uh, so that people can 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 travel on. So there are pathways. So these pathways they are not watered, okay? Uh, so they are not fertile uh, places. And when, once it goes to the pathway, the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly, but the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because, that, because they had no root. Other seeds fell along among thorns, which grew up and shook the plants. Okay? 
Still others fell on good soil, where it produced a crop a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. And Jesus said to them, that whoever has an ear, let him hear. Then the disciples came to him and asked, said, why do you speak to the people in parables? Okay. What, how do we understand this? It's a story. Okay, it's a nice story. But what's the lesson? Now, why do you speak in parables? Okay. And he, Jesus replied, because the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them. Whoever has will be given more, and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. This is why I speak to them in parables. Though seeing, they do not see. Though hearing, they do not hear or understand. In them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, Isaiah, you will be ever learning but never understanding you will ever you will ever uh, be ever seeing but never perceiving for this people's heart has been callous they hardly hear with their ears and they have closed their eyes otherwise they might see with their eyes hear with their ears understand with their hearts and turn and i would heal them. Okay. Sometimes the parables, the stories, the anecdotes, the lessons of Jesus is difficult to understand. Okay. But for those who have the Holy Spirit, it is not difficult. Okay. But people who have closed minds, okay. Ears hard of hearing, <laughs> yeah, okay, you know. They cannot easily accept God's truth, okay. So that's what Jesus Christ is saying. So Jesus Christ then came and he said, But blessed are your eyes because they see, and your ears because they hear. For truly I tell you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. So listen then to the parables of the sower name. So Jesus Christ calls this parable the parable of the sower. Okay? It is not the parable of the seed. It is not the parable of the ground. It is the parable of the sower. Okay. So the focus should be on the sower and not the seed and not the soil or the ground. Okay. Because this parable is not for everyone. This parable is for the disciples. It's for you. Okay. It's for all of us. He said, when anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their hearts. This is the seed sown along the path. Okay. So if you are the sower, you throw the seed, it goes to the path. Okay. And if the guy, the person doesn't understand it, Okay, he said the evil one will come and snatch it away. And the seed falling on rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. And when trouble comes, persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. So, when they want to put what they have learned, the truth, in practice, sometimes it's not that easy. Okay? And do they are sort of persecuted and they fall away because they have no roots. Verse 22, the seed 
Falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. So, but the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it, this is the one who produces a crop, yielding a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Okay. Because of this explanation of Jesus, you know, and Jesus called this the parable of sower, the focus has always been on the soil, whether it's effective or not the effectiveness right okay and the rest you know how it is received by the hearer okay. but this is the parable of the sower okay it's not the parable of the hearer or the seed or the ground okay so what is jesus christ trying to say to the disciples is that you are the sower. You know, some of the seed that you sow will fall on the path. Some of the seed that you sow will land on uh, uh, the rocky places. Some will grow up a bit and be choked by the world. But some will bear fruits. So what do you do as a sower? You say, wag na lang. You know? Because more of the seed, 75% of the seed, that actually go to waste. Okay? Only a little you know, of 25% or even less actually is effective. So what do you do? Okay? So our job as sower of the seed, okay, we are focused on the scattering of the seed. That's our role. And we know that some will not be effective, but some, though small, but some will bear fruit. The main focus of the parable is on the sower. It is our job to sow the seed. You know, whether it is fertile ground or not too fertile ground. Okay. Our focus is in the preaching. Our focus is in the preaching of the gospel. Okay. We are the sower. Okay. We sow the seeds. Okay. And we know that you know, a great number of the things that we've been doing will fall on deaf ears. Okay, but some <clears throat> will bear fruit. Okay, and that is where we focus our attention. Okay, and that is what motivates us to do the work. Okay. To do the work, the workers, they need training, right? You need training. And Jesus actually trained the disciples okay he gave them principles okay he gave them the holy spirit and they asked them to do actual exercises and we can read this in matthew chapter 10 and uh, verses 1 to 8 jesus called his 12 disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out evil spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. So, 
And these are the name of the 12 apostles. First, it's Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother James, uh, Andrew, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas, and Matthew, the tax collector, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, uh, Simon the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed Jesus. This talk, Jesus set out with the following instruction. He said, Do not go among the Gentiles or enter any town of the Samaritans. Go rather to the lost ship of Israel. As you go, proclaim this message, the kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, heal those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Free, freely you have received. Freely. Okay, so he sent out the twelve, you know, and gave them the power of the Holy Spirit. And they were able to perform signs and miracles as they preach the gospel of the kingdom of God. Okay. <clears throat> Afterwards, Jesus sent out a bigger group. And we can read this in Luke chapter 10. Okay, let's go to Luke, the 10th chapter, starting from verse 1. He said, After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. Yeah. So this contingent of 72, you know, of two by two, how many pairs is this? How many pairs? Hey, either you're sleeping or you're very slow, Samat, <laughs> right? And I want to think that you are sleeping and not poor at math, okay? 36, right? So these are 36 pairs and they were sent ahead uh, of Jesus Christ, okay? So before Jesus go to a particular place, a town, these 36 would go ahead, okay? So he told them, they say harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Okay? There are many people that we can save. You know, but very few workers. Say, so ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into the harvest. Go, I'm sending you like lambs among wolves. Do not take a purse or bag or sandals and do not greet anyone on the road. So when you enter a house, First say, peace to the house. If someone who promotes peace is there, your peace will rest on them. If not, it will return to you. Stay there, eat, drink, whatever they give you. For the workers deserve his wages. Do not move around from house to house. So you go to a town, you know, if the house, the owner of the house, he likes your message, he welcomes you, stay with them, okay? And your peace will be with them. They'll be blessed, you know, because of you staying with them. When you enter a town and are welcome, eat what is offered to you. Heal the sick who are there and tell them the kingdom of God has come near to you. And when you enter a town and are not welcome, Go into the streets and say, Even the dust of your town will uh, wipe, uh, we wipe from our feet as a warning to you. Yet, be sure of this, the kingdom of God has come near. So I tell you, it is more bearable on that day for Sodom than for that town. What to you, Chorazin? What to you, Bethsaida? For if the miracles that were performed in you had been performed in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth and in ashes. Okay? But it will be more bearable for Tyre and Sidon at the judgment than for you. And you, Capernaum, will be lifted to the heavens. Or will you be lifted to the heavens? No, you will go down... To the grave, to Hades. 
Whoever listens to you listens to me. Whoever rejects you rejects me. But whoever rejects me rejects him who sent me. Now, why is it so harsh? Okay, why? Because they see the power of God at work. Okay, these 36 pairs, 72, they go out with the miracles. They perform miracles. They can perform miracles through the power of the Holy Spirit. And yet, if they are rejected, they would have rejected, you know, the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, so that's why Jesus said all these harsh words against them. You know? And you remember that when Jonah, when he went to the city of Nineveh, and when he preached, didn't make any miracle, he just preached, people repented in sackcloth. Okay? But these people, accompanied by miracles, Jesus said, if they don't accept you, okay, dust off the dust from your feet, you know, and they will be judged accordingly, he said. The 72, verse 17, returned with joy and said, Lord, even demons submit, us, uh, submit to us in your name. Ang galing. You know, they can drive out demons. He said, the demons, takot sa amin. Okay? We can drive them out. They submit to your names. Okay? To your name. He replied, Jesus replies, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I've given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. However, do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. See, at that time, Jesus, full of joy, through the Holy Spirit said, I praise you, Father. Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. All things have been committed to me by my Father, Jesus said. No one knows who the Son is except the Father, and no one knows the Father, who the Father is except the Son. And those to whom the Son chooses to reveal. Then he turned to his disciples and said, and said privately, Blessed are the eyes that see what you see. So you go out, you preach the gospel, you know, sow the seed, you know, some will reject you, some will kick you out of their town, some will invite you in, some will welcome you in. But blessed are those who see what you see. Okay? For I tell you that many prophets and kings wanted to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. Okay? This is connected to the parable of the sower. Okay. Go out. Sometimes you will receive hard words. Okay. People won't like your message. It will fall on deaf ear. They will drive you out of the synagogue. They will drive you out of the community. But some will receive it with joy. And they will be able to see what you see. The harvest of God, the spiritual harvest, is ongoing. It hasn't stopped. The harvest is ongoing. The work continues. And Jesus Christ said that we must do the work while it is still daylight. Okay. And he said this in John chapter 9. Okay. And he said that a time will come when it is impossible, okay, to preach 
the truth. Today, when you go to your internet, you know, your cell phone, you know, there are lots of, uh, you know, uh, evangelists, tele-evangelists, internet, net evangelists, and dami niyan. You know, they preach about love. Right? That's why a lot of churches today, you know, they actually conduct same-sage marriage within the church. You know that? Okay, some of the churches, they accept gay couples, you know, the, you know, uh, transvestite into the church. Why? Love. Okay? It's all because of love. Okay? But is that what is the truth? Is that what God wants? Okay? And it will come a time that it is it will be extremely difficult to preach against that. Okay? Do you know that in Canada there is I think a bill or it says you know that uh, they are outlawing Christianity. Okay? Something to that particular effect. Okay. Why? You know why? You know why? Okay. Because we say, sometimes we say not too good a thing. You know, about certain individuals with certain orientations. Okay. Ayaw nila yan. Okay, so they are trying to do that. John chapter 9, he said, verse 1, As we went along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Neither, neither this man was born blind. Uh, uh, neither this man nor his parents sinned. So neither. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, he wasn't born blind or uh, his parents sinned. Okay. But this happened so that the work of God might be displayed in him. So as long as it is day, we must do the work of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. Okay. So a time will come that it will be very difficult to preach okay, the truth. To preaching the Ten Commandments will be, sometimes I think soon it will be criminalized. Okay. If you preach against, you know, uh, uh, what do you call this? Uh, you, know, uh, you know, gay marriages. You know, because you know, and, and, and I talk about that, diba? Yung, uh, the, uh, the gay wedding cake, diba? the gay couple wedding cake. Okay, so it will be very difficult, maybe one of these days in the future, to preach it. I, I also wonder, so when the two witnesses. When the two witnesses uh, uh, to appear on the world scene, what would they preach? Kaya, no? That they were hated so much that you know they were killed. Okay. So what on earth will they preach? And Jesus said that a time will come, and he called it night that no one can work. So how do we so so how do we as the new disciples of Christ you know what what should we do? Okay? So how do we preach the gospel unto the ends of the earth? Okay? And this is what Paul wrote and I'm sure you are very familiar with this few verses. Romans chapter 10. Let's go to Romans chapter 10. So, as scripture says, anyone who believes in me will never be put to shame. 
For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on Him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Then how can they call on the one that they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom that they have not heard? Romans 10. Okay, and in verse 15. Let's go to verse 14. So how can they call on the one that they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom that they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? So if the gospel is to be preached unto the ends of the earth, someone needs to preach it. Okay? So faith comes from hearing. So somebody needs to preach the gospel. Okay? He said, And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Okay? But not all the Israel, Israelites accept the good news. For Isaiah said, Lord, who has believed our messages? Yes, our job is to preach. But not everyone will accept and believe the message. We are the sower. Okay, we're not the harvester. We sow the seed. That's our work. That's our job. Okay. Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of Christ. Okay. So we are called to do a work. Okay. Very often we think na well. I am just a lay member. Yeah. Lay member. Kailan, kailan, kulang ng Z eh. Yeah, okay. Member. I'm just happy to warm a seat. Okay na ako. You know, I just pay the tithe and pray for the work. Okay? That's my job. Okay? <clears throat> I think we need to do more than that. Okay? Paying your tithe is your obligation. Praying is your relationship with God. You need to do that. You know, but we need to do a little bit more. Right? <clears throat> because we are the disciples of Christ. So we need to work. And I think the the Feast of Weeks suggests that it is harvest time. Harvest time, people work. That is why the first day of the Feast of Weeks, which is the day of the wave shift offering, is not a high day. Although it's a very important day, it's not a high day, it's not a high Sabbath. It's, you know why? Because you need to work. You need to work, right? Now, <clears throat> so how can we work? Okay. So I've given you the principle behind it. You know, I'll give you some maybe practical ways, you know, of how you can help preach the gospel. Personal evangelism. So we say, hey, what is personal evangelism? Do I need to preach? Okay. Do I need to create a small group in my company or in my neighborhood that I preach to them? Okay. Well, you can, if you can, why not, right? You know, that would be a fantastic thing. Okay. But I think that we can preach using our lives as example. So when they see us, they will glorify God okay, on the day of visitation. The scripture says that. Okay. So, when we show ourselves, you know, proper to the world, we are ambassadors for Christ. And that way, we are preaching. But if you can share 
the truth that will be fantastic. You know? So when people come and tell and see you, okay, so meticulous about ordering your, let's say, uh, ulam, your food, yung pancit ba? May pork? So when people ask, see you being very meticulous about the food that you eat, they say, ano ba yan? Okay, then it is opportunity for you to share. Don't tell them, kasi sir, allergic po ako dyan. I'm allergic to shellfish. That's not. You're not the light of the world. You are a light that is under the table. Right? Hidden under the table. Light of the world is that you want everyone to see. Okay. Allergic? No kidding me. Right? Light of the world. And this bucket that you share. Okay? And one thing leads to another. Okay. So God's my religion. Ah, really? Kanya ba? Okay. Ano pa? Sabbath. Ah? Pasang na yung Sabbath. So, bakit Sabbath? Ito. You know? Oh, why are you applying for leave? Eight days. Feast of Tabernacle. So, ano ba yan? Explain. See? Those are the ways that you evangelize. You know? And people sometimes will get curious. Eh. Okay? Ano ba yan? I want to learn more. Di ba? Share more. Okay? But, you must study. You cannot evangelize if you are not studying. If you don't know anything, you can share anything. So you need to study. Well, coming to the service, yes, you'll learn a few things. Okay? But study is important. Right? <clears throat> and that's how you bear fruit. You know? And by sharing. Personal evangelism is about yourself. It's not about others. You. How you project yourself as an ambassador of Christ. And when people ask you, you must be ready to respond properly. And that's how you evangelize. By your deeds. Okay? So, please see all you. Sipat nito, ang galing nito ah. Paskin ha, hindi po apasok ng Sabado, pero okay siya. Galing niya. Right? And when people ask you, why you don't work on a Sabbath? Why do you apply for a leave? You know, why do you do this? Why do you do that? Then you start sharing the good news of the kingdom of God. Personal evangelism. Share the truth. Sharing the truth is just like sowing the seed. It is sowing the seed, not just like. It is sowing the seed. The truth is the seed. You just share it. You have already sown the seed. Whether the guy is fertile or not, you know, whether it's a good soil or not, I don't care. Such as your job. Your job is to sow the seed. Some will come. 3N? What did you just say? What is the, the, the Sabbath? What is the Sabbath? You know, some will come. And then now you share. Kasi yung iba, kapag ito kami of the Sabbath, ah, wala yan, yan, yan. Sunday na ngayon. Satan come, took it out. Okay? But you saw the seed. It's okay. Well, Satan come and took it out. Kalaban mo si Satanas. Di ba? Saw the seed. So Satan come. And some will say, say, okay, ano ba yung Sabbath na yan? Then you share. Sabbath. Ah, kaya yun ba? Kaya lang, may trabaho ako eh. Okay? Hindi pwede ako mag-upset ng Sabbath. Hindi wala na. But some will say, ah, Sabbath, sige, attend ako. Okay? So, attend siya. After a while, he said, oh, palaki ka upset, Sabbath do. Nakatay ko ng church eh. Maawa lang ka ng trabaho. Oh, sige. I for, uh, I'll forgo Sabbath and I'll go to work again. Third kind you know. Okay? Chalk by the world. And the fourth one is, Oh nga, no? Sabat, no? Okay. Okay ba itong buhay ni 3N na ito? Di okay yan. Sige, sama ako dyan. Okay? Magaling pa kumanta. Oo. So, eventually, it takes 
roots. Right? So we're personal evangelism. You are the sower. Okay. So how else can you sow the seed? Okay. Kung lahat ng kapitbahay mo, kaaway mo, ah, you won't sow any seed there. Right? So, when I was talking to Mel the other day, I said, oh, Mel na ito. Sa Mel, we grew to a certain to a certain size in in Malolos. Okay. <clears throat> and after that, naging stuck din na siya. Just, what, what, what happened here? Let's, you know, let's strategize. Let's look back. Okay. Learn from uh, the past. Okay. Ano history natin dito sa, ano, sa Malolos? Except we started out doing home study. Nag-home study kami roon eh. Yung ano, yung we went to yung mga villages. Okay, we conducted Bible study in the villages. Okay. And we know that had been that was, you know, successful <clears throat> for a while. And we did that for a few years on the early years when we set up the uh, Malolos church. Somehow sabi ko, meron nawala yun eh. Nawala siya. Either two things, sabi ko. Ba't nawala siya yung home study? Bakit nawala siya? Two things. Nawalang sponsor. Nawalang sponsor. No one is organizing it. You know? Or, we are not willing, the ministers are not willing to do it. We're not going there to do it. Okay. It's either in short is we're not doing it it's either I'm not willing to go to your home, to your house to conduct a Bible study, or you are not organizing it. So if you organize it, we'll be there. Right? So we say, hey, maybe we should bring that back. Okay. And that is one way of sharing. Okay, That's one way of sowing the seed. Yeah, some people will come for pancit, right? If you have pancit at home, a lot of people will come just for the snack. You know, but you're sowing the seed. So we're giving you this challenge. Okay? We are willing to do home studies. If you can organize, we'll come. Okay? So that's one way of doing it. Okay? We don't have to do it on Saturday. Okay? We can do it on a Sunday. Right. Now, and I think the third will be the easiest way. We have monthly Bible study. Okay? So what we're doing is that we have Bible study, monthly Bible study, and we advertised last, last Sabbath, we had a Bible study. Ano title natin? Nakalimutan nyo na, di ba? Ha? May kodi ko kayo, no? Okay, so what is your life? So what we advertise eh, dun sa digital, di ba? We did some digital uh, marketing, Facebook, you know. 500,000 people. Uh, di ba? 500,000? Uh, five, huh? Alex, 460-something or 70-something thousand people. Okay, saw the ad. Uh, a few commented. Okay. How many came? Ha? Huh? Dalawa. None. Wala. Kala ko dalawa. Zero. Wala. Okay. I think it will be more effective if we bring friends. And that's what other churches are doing. They bring their friends. 
Okay? If they bring 10 friends, maybe one will stay. Nine will not stay. Maybe one. If you bring zero friends, zero friend, 100% will stay. Right? Bakit? Zero times 100 equals zero. Okay? We need to bring friends. We have the venue already. Okay? Just invite them to come. I know some of you are doing that. Okay? Let's do that more. Okay? Can't rely on the ad. Matagal yan. The gestation period is so long. Okay? We know that. During the worldwide, okay, when they sent out this magazine, the Worldwide Church of God, that magazine, that Plain Truth magazine, okay, my brother Walter has been reading that magazine when he was 11 years old. Maybe even younger, right? Okay, you ask him when he was baptized. Long period. And I can also ask you, you have been reading the armor of uh, the Plain Truth magazine. You know, when were you baptized? Right? Matagal. Okay, Frank. Lobok. Okay, talk to me. It, uh, uh, he said, in my youth, I already know the word of of God. Because my father was a subscriber of the Plain Truth. Okay, he just baptized recently, <laughs> right? It, the gestation period is so long. Okay, but the easiest one is invite your friends. Those who are somehow interested, it's more fertile. Those who are willing to come, it's a more fertile environment. Okay, bring people to the Bible study or invite them. Bring people to church. Okay? We are not doing that enough. We are an open church. We are not a closed church. Okay? Even if you are late, that door is still open. Okay? We don't shut down people. You know, we invite them. We embrace them. Anyone who comes in, welcome. Because the message of Christ is free. Okay? So please bring people to the church. Okay. Some people sometimes when they come and join us, you know, this was the early days, no? Now I don't hear that anymore. Eh? But in the early days, when people come and join us, you know, some people say, I don't like the church. Eh? I see cold. Have you heard that? Huh? Have you heard that? You know, your church is cold. Oh, uh, let's lower the air conditioning unit, you know? So, you know, kulang na tayo ng warm. Okay, pag may bibisita, oh, dyan ka lang, ha? Dyan ka, dito ako. Okay lang. Okay. So, there's no warm. You know, in other churches, when you have a visitor, ah, you know, parang siyang superstar. Ando siya, dinudumog sila. You know, and they feel okay, you know, this project, okay, okay. I'm very welcome here. Tayo dito, hindi eh. Okay, kanyang-kanyang, di po an. You know, I know already, give where you're gonna sit. I memorize the seating, the seating plan here. Alam ko na kung saan kayo nakaupo. I can point where you are. Okay, you don't mingle, you know. Parang siyang classroom na may seat assignment eh, di ba? Okay. Parang may invincible ink niya ka doon sa mga pupuan natin. Okay, now. So, fellowshipping is important. Okay? At least nakikita ko doon sa Bible study ngayon. Kapag may visitor, you know, we try to engage them. Okay? So, there's are some five points I think that, you know, uh, you know, that we can work on as a start as we sow the seed. Okay. Parable of the sower is not for everyone. The parable of sower are for the disciples of Jesus Christ. Okay. 
That's for us. For us. Okay? We are the sower. That's why the parable is for us. Okay? We don't judge the effectiveness. That's not our job. Our job is to sow the seed. Okay. Therefore, in conclusion, the Feast of Weeks is not a time to rest on our laurels. Save na ako. I have the Holy Spirit. Oh, okay na dwelling in me. Okay. Part na ako ng Church of the First Fruit. Okay na. Done. It's not that. The Feast of Weeks is a time to work. It's a harvest time. Okay? Har it's a sowing time. It's a harvest time. The Feast of Weeks reminds us that there is work to be done. Seven times seven plus one. day. As Jesus said, the harvest is plentiful, but workers are few. Okay? But these few workers can be productive workers. Tayo yun. Okay? So let us do the work together while we can, while still light. Okay? And do not worry about the results. Okay? Sometimes we, ministers, we get together. Saan bakit kaya, ano? We bump our head on the wall, scratch our head. That's why we're losing hair. Okay? And say, you know what? Do we need to do that we have more people? Okay? Maybe we can have uh, better looking guys talking in front, right? Maybe more people talking in Tagalog, right? Or better singers. So we should not be worried about the results or effectiveness. Because people hear, like for example, you know, the message, not my message. Example, don't use my message as an example. Use John's message as an example. Okay. John's message will go out as he speaks, okay, and different people will hear it differently. Like this message. Okay. To some, it has a certain charm. To some, you know, it's maybe a, an encouragement. To some, it may be a, a uh, criticism. To some, it may be a challenge. Okay? And it depends on how you hear it. How you hear it is not my problem. Okay? That is how the Holy Spirit is interpreting for you. Okay, you hear it as you interpret it through the spirit that is in you. Okay, so now key here is that we are here for, you know, to do God's work. You know, that's our job. Okay, and people outside, you know, when they come in fellowship with us, those who are in the first time, you know, they will hear it very differently from how we would understand it. Okay? Because understanding level yung mataas na eh. You know, a newbie, understanding level is lower. They will understand it very differently. You know, so there is a spectrum of understanding even among us. Okay? I don't expect us to be understand it, sending all the messages, you know, As one thing. Kasi spectrum tayo eh. You know? Different. And we hear it differently as the Holy Spirit imparts to us. And we know that we are a sower. We, as a sower, we do not judge the effectiveness of what we do. Okay? But what is important is that we do the job. Many will reject the message. But some will receive the message with gladness. So our job, our job is not to judge the effectiveness. 
Our task is to do the work. We are the soul. Okay. Walang sowing, walang harvesting. Di ba? Mr. Ernesio, di ba? No sowing, no harvesting. Okay. And since the harvest continues, the sowing continues. And that is, I think, one of the lessons of the Feast of Weeks. Okay? So, as Paul said, we're the sower. You know? Someone will do the water. Okay? And God will give the increase. So we have work to be done. You know, feast of the uh, Pentecost, the Feast of Weeks, is about us doing the work that has been given to us.